Hello, so in today's video I'm going to be talking about The Seller by Richard Lehman and this is the first book review I've ever done where I actually don't know what my thoughts are about this book. <laughs> I can't quite piece together if I liked this book or if I hated this book which is kind of a weird concept because let me just tell you how I came upon this book. So this book was given to me in an abominable book club box. It's a horror book subscription box I do on this channel. And I've gotten, I think, four books by this author. And I was like, I really need to start reading them. Um, they come in the second hand genre because you get like three different books in the book box. And one of them being second hand, so it's different for every box. And I kept getting this um, author, Richard Lehman, and I didn't know much about him. So I did a little bit of researching on Goodreads and found out he is an extreme horror writer. And he's often compared to Graham Masterton, and I really like Graham Masterton's books. They're really bizarre, really weird. And when people were saying this guy runs a similar vein, he does extreme horror, um, it's like horror horror kind of books I was like okay now I'm really interested and I'm gonna have to start making my way through his books and originally I was gonna do a reading vlog where I read all of his books and then did a review of all of them in one video but that's taking quite a while because his other books that I have are quite chunky this is quite this is the smallest one I have and it's around uh, just under 300 pages and um after I read this book, like I said, this being the first one I picked up by him may not have been the wisest choice to pick this one first. I'll go into that later. But, um, yeah, after reading this, I was like, I'm going to need a minute before I read anything else by him just to let this sink in. It's been about two months since I read this book. Like, when I first... Uh, finished it I filmed a review straight away and I was like all over the place in the review and then I was like Do you know what I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna let this sit with me for a while to see if I actually can make up my mind whether I like this book or not and it's like I said it's been a couple months and I still don't know I still can't decide whether I like this book or not it was so like a lot this book was a lot so yeah I picked this book to read first because I was like oh the seller that sounds interesting and then you read the synopsis on the back and it's talking about this house called the beast house and it says visitors flock to see the beast house with its blood soaked corridors and creaky doors and I was just like yeah this sounds like it's going to be right up my street creepy story about some beast in this like house with a creature in it's going to be great i love books surrounding creepy houses um it's going to be like a monster horror book um yeah it says tourists go deep inside and it goes inside their deepest nightmares um it says the men are dealt with quickly the women have to wait longer so yeah, I was like, oh, this is going to be around this beast house. That sounds really good. Um, yeah, it's... <laughs> I'm trying to think how I can even describe this book without getting without giving too much away. But this book is split between a few different characters. You have a mother and a daughter. And then you have two men. And the book begins with the mother and the daughter... And the mother and the daughter are basically on the run. They're on the run from the woman's husband and the daughter's um, father. He was in prison and he's just been released from prison. He was this horribly, horribly abusive man. Um, like the worst kind of crime you could think of. Um, basically towards children. That's what he was doing and he's a horrible horrible man and basically said when he he said that when he gets out of prison he's basically going to come after them so these two women are on the run 
and you get a little bit a few few chapters with them on the run and they end up crashing their car in this town and staying in this hotel and then we get a little bit from these two other men and um the two other men kind of meet ram randomly so it's about this guy and he's having a nightmare and then you meet up his neighbour can basically hear him and then they end up having a conversation and basically um, this guy is like look I'm having nightmares about this house I knew when I was a kid and there's a monster in this house and basically this other guy is like some army type guy you don't get too much background from him but you get the idea that he's like a top military guy um, like a hard ass kind of guy and he basically was like well how much will you pay me and I will sort out your nightmares so he ends up the, the guy um who's having the nightmares hires him and they also end up in this town and this motel and then they end up they meet in a cafe randomly and end up becoming um friends the four of them end up in this friend group the mum and the daughter and these two guys um who are basically going to enter the enter the beast house to kill the beast basically and this all happens very quickly the relationship that develops between these four characters happens so fast they basically they literally meet in this cafe and then they both meet out on the street and they're going the two guys are going for a tour because the people who now own the beast house are doing tours of the house because there's been several murders and killings in the house so it's like a horror tour where they're touring people around the house going look this person died here and this person died there and this is what happened. Um, so they go to join the tour, and then the uh, the mother Donna, um, she spots, she kind of fancies the army guy. She spots him in the line and was like to the daughter, "Oh, let's go in and have a look and all this kind of stuff." And then then they end up talking, and then they very quickly end up in a relationship. The army guy and the mother, like I said, it happens super fast. You're like. They end up, for like, for a woman who's on the run from an abusive husband, she like really, I don't know, she just took to this guy really fast and, and is like really trusting of these people that they don't know, which I found a bit bizarre, um, but I get they have to move the story along. Um, and the characters were quite interesting, but I really wanted to focus on the beast house like that was my interest in this book i wanted to know what was happening in the beast house what is the beast what is happening why is it killing these people how is it killing these people why do people keep going into this house and that was the bit that really hooked me with this book that's what i really wanted to find out which by the end of the book i'm not really sure about but again um yeah i really wanted to get into the beast house and into this story but we then start flipping back and forth between this group of people these four people and the ex-husband who is now on the hunt for his wife and daughter and the scenes with him are really hard scenes to read because again i know this is a horror book and a lot of male authors seem to use like sexual horror as a thing to like freak people out which i get in books because they're horror books and, and that is a horrifying aspect but when you're reading things like that between like a child predator and a victim like i really don't want to read that i was like that was too descriptive and too much <laughs> it was too much i was like i really hate scenes like that in books and i really didn't want to read that and you kept flipping back to scenes with this criminal i can't say the word because otherwise i feel like my video may be flagged or taken down but you know what i'm implying um the worst crime you can imagine happening to a child he basically on the way kidnaps a kid and is being a horrific asshole the entire time to said child 
and I don't want to read scenes like that. It was really, really uncomfortable. Um, which is why, which made me bring this book down a little bit. Like, I feel like that was just unnecessary. It was unnecessary for the story. You already had enough in the story to keep me interested because I wanted to know about the Beast House. You didn't need to put those other aspects in as added elements of horror. Like, it was horror enough. I didn't need the extra horror. Do you know what I mean? Um, so that was really off-putting about this book. And you basically had that throughout the whole book. It kept flipping back and forth between the characters. And... yeah so then obviously if they all come he ends up in the town they're in and they will end up in the beast house and sh shit goes down and that was all good because you're like okay like the story's moving along um we're gonna find out what's in the beast house what's happening and like i'm trying not to say stuff like too much i don't want to give stuff away but like, it just turns out so weird. When I finished reading the ending, I literally read the ending, shut the book, and my first thoughts were, what the fuck did I just read? <laughs> like, and I like horror horror books. Like I said, I like James Masterton books. I can read quite horrific scenes. And it wasn't even like they were so horrific. It was just like, that's so gross. And so, like, it made me question the author. It made me question, what is wrong with this, what is wrong with this man? Like, what is wrong with the writer <laughs> to be able to write this kind of a book? But I feel like, as a horror writer, is that a good thing that I felt that way? Because when you read horror, you want to be, you want to feel horror. You want to be, like, horrified when you finish the book. Which is how I felt when I finished this book. I was like, what the fuck? And like I said, there were really unnecessary scenes of abuse in this book that I did not want to read and were not necessary to the story. So that's what kind of made me want to give it like a one star. But then at the same time, I had to finish this book because I really wanted to know what the fuck was happening in the Beast House. And then I finished the book and I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> and then I found out it's a series. This is the first in a three book series. So now do I buy the other books? <laughs> like, I don't really want to read more because it was so gross. But I also want to read more because I want to know what's going to happen. It's like... It was such a difficult book to rate. Because I'm torn between... I'm torn between giving it a five star. Because it was so like, what the fuck? Um, which normally I enjoy books like that. But also I wanted to give it a one star because I really hated the unnecessarily graphically described abuse scenes in this. But then it's a horror book, so you're supposed to be horrified by it, which I was. So do you see where I'm going with this? Do you see my dilemma? I'm like, I don't know whether I like this book or not. Like... I read it really quickly and I really wanted to know what was going to happen. It definitely kept me hooked. The writing was interesting. Overly graphic. <laughs> it was one of those books where like I finished it and immediately I had to go to my husband and be like, I just read the weirdest fucking book. Like I have to tell you. And I used a very specific phrase to describe it. And I feel like if you go look at some good read reviews, you'll get the gist of what I'm saying. I don't want to say it because it's going to give like major stuff away. But this book was very much horror, gore, another word, which I'm not going to say. But go read Goodreads reviews or Google the book and you will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, it was weird. So after I read this book, I was like... That's when I kind of scrapped the vlog because I was like, how am I going to review this book? What am I going to say about it? Do I want to read more by this author? Um, but I am kind of intrigued now because it was... It was like a weird concept that I could see why people described it like um, similar writing to James Masterson. 
um, Gray Masterton, sorry, not James, I don't know where I got that from. Gray Masterton. Um, and I really like his book. And his books are really weird as well. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I have like two other books, no, three other books by this author. Um, but they're not in the same series. They're not in the Beast House series. Um, they're completely other ones. And they all sound really interesting. All three of the books sound really interesting. But I'm like, after reading this, I'm like, do I want to read more by this author? But I do because he's like, books are weird, so it's going to be interesting. I'm so torn. Um, and like I said, I hadn't heard of this author before I got the book box. Um, and then when I like was looking him up on Instagram and stuff, he's quite a popular horror writer. So let me know, have you heard of his books before? Um, have you read anything by Richard Lehman? Let me know, because when I was looking at reviews of his books actually, this is one of the lowest rated ones. So I probably started, I think I started on a really weird book of his. Um, I probably should have like Googled all the books I have by him and picked a different one first, then maybe come back to this one. But the fact I read this one first, <laughs> um, maybe not the best idea. <coughs> But yeah, I also have In the Dark by him, I have Savage, and I have the vam a vampire one, which I have read a couple pages of, I've kind of started, I think I'm going to read that one next. Um, but yeah, should I get the other books in the Cellar series? Like the Beast House series, sorry. Um, have you read them or heard of them? Please let me know, I need advice. Um, I like I said, I don't know. I don't know if this is a one star or a five star. I don't know. It was it was so <laughs> weird. I've never read a book like it. Like I've read some really weird stuff, but this is right up there with like one of the weirdest, most disturbing books I read. So yeah, I think I am going to read more from him, and I'll let you guys know. Um, so yeah let me know your thoughts that's pretty much all i have to say about this book i can't really say any more without giving away stuff but just know if you are ever interested in picking up the seller by richard layman this is your warning it's really freaking weird it's really gross there are some very disturbing scenes in this book so yeah that is your warnings for this book and that's all I have to say. So let me know your thoughts. Um, do you have any, any recommendations with Richard Lehman books? Have you read any that you're like, oh, this would be a really good one for you to read? Because um, like I said, I like weird stuff. But that was a lot. And if that was one of his lowest rated books, um, I might have to see if I can hunt down one of his highest rating books to see what that is like. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say. So as always, thank you for watching and until next time, bye guys.